This is Replicant Fish. Hit the like button and subscribe for more content. Welcome back to another episode of Fish Philosophy. Hope you've had a good day, hope you're doing well, hope you're feeling well, and with that I hope you've felt yourself today. So to the topic, a very dark and cold topic, for some anyway, the topic of why the one doesn't exist. Because the one doesn't exist. You see, it's a nice thought. That thought that somewhere out there, somewhere out there in the world, amongst all the clowns and the crap people out there, amongst the fakers, the clout chasers, amongst the morons, for some, they have a belief that out there there is someone for them. No matter what, now I do understand, that's a beautiful thought, it's a lovely thought, Ah, oh, there's someone out there for everyone, and for some, that is their soulmate. But you see, that thought to me, that notion, has always seemed like romantic hope, the hope of future romance, the hope that there is someone out there for you, and the selling of the thought of, there's someone out there for everyone. Because it is a nice thought. Who would ever want to think there's no one out there for me? There's no one out there for anyone. In a sense, everyone is just winging it. They're taking a chance. Most people would not want to hear that. That sounds too dark. It sounds too cold. It sounds too real. Because the fact is, there is no one. Let me use this as an example. One of my exes, one I lived with for many years, in a sense, you could say, and it being the truth, that is the woman I cared about the most. Indeed. Now, every now and again she would say something to me that didn't get on my nerves to say but it… I thought it was stupid. And she would say, you're my soulmate. <laughs> and I would laugh. I literally would laugh. And obviously that would cause friction. Because from my point of view and as I say to her, I don't believe in a soulmate. And then I would explain it, the possibility of billions of people on this planet, throughout time, finding each other again and being together again, to me that sounded stupid, sounds ridiculous. Does it make sense? It sounds romantic. It sounds like something you could sell, you could market. It sounds like something put out there to give certain people hope. Because you see, the thing is, hope is a powerful thing. It's a very powerful thing. For some people, without no hope of finding this supposed one, this soulmate if you will, for some people their life becomes daunting. It becomes dead and lifeless without the existence of that thought, that there is someone out there for them, for everyone. But that's not real. That's not reality. As I've said before, it's the selling of a fantasy, a Disney fantasy, a Hollywood fantasy. The romance novel, the love song, the rom-com, the love flick, which for some is actually a horror movie, but seriously, it's the selling of that, that idea. Now you see, I understand it. I understand that some people need this boost, this hope, this motivation to seek, and in seeking, they will find. Forget all these mistake people. These people are nothing in comparison to finding the one. Because when I find the one, then I will be complete. I will then be whole. Sounds nice, but it does have an air of delusion. Now let's do this. What about those who feel as if they have found the one? Or they had found the one and then lost the one? In a sense, the thought of the one that got away. The one you lost. The one you did not see value for while you had them and now that they're not here, they're no longer around, you now feel the loss. You don't know what you have until it's gone. Hmm. But the thing about that is, if you're with someone and no longer with them, and you feel as if this person was, let's say, the love of your life, understand how weak you are to that person. Because for some, that means they would do almost anything to get back with that person. They would sacrifice almost anything 
to get back with that person because they were the one. The one that got away. That should have been wifey. That should have been the mother of my children, my child, whatever. But you see, in the thoughts of losing the one makes many people unable to get on with their life because they feel as if there is no life. The one that got away, now gone, in the arms of someone else. Another man. Another man who may be smashing her right. Yes, he may be. Smashing her right and good. Hold that thought. Understand that. Understand for your thought of the one. Would the one not be the one? Would the one not be something more than just another person you may happen to get with? You met this person by chance. You saw this person somewhere. You saw their picture online, all that crap. Is that fate? Or chance? Were you meant to meet her? Or did you just stumble across her? You see, there is power in the hope of finding this love. Of finding this person. There is also the hope of getting back the person you lost that may have been the one. But understand, there are many things in the past that should be left in the past. From a past relationship, and even from a past life with all this soulmate nonsense. Even if a soulmate, even if the one. Sometimes even so, some things should be left in the past. Either way, there are certain things in life that make people become stuck, stagnant. They can't move past this point here. That's because some are still living in the past. Not the present, not the gift of now. They're still living in the past. So if you are living in the past, something that happened before, or something you hope to happen again relative to the past, all that crap, then how the hell do you expect to move forward? You can't move forward. You're holding yourself back by anchoring yourself to things in your past or things in your future you hope to find based on some romantic notion. Now you see, I've been called cold, referred to as cold, machine-like, android-like, hence the name. But from my perspective, it's a sense of questioning things, asking the question, how real is that thought? Is there an air of fantasy to it? Is it a sense of lying to yourself to make life seem better and more comfortable? In a sense, yes, many human beings do do this. Lie to themselves to make the world seem better. Certain lies could make sense if they're making your life better. But lying to yourself that you can't be a complete person without someone else is one of the biggest lies you could ever tell your damn self. That thought will stop you from moving forward and keep you stagnant in that place. Understand this, for some people that want a relationship in the future, by thinking one would emerge would actually stop you from finding one if you actually wanted one. Does that make sense? But what does make sense to some? What makes sense to some more than the soulmate or the one? Is the one that they are. The one in themselves. The soul they are in themselves. Their soul, who they are, their being. What they want for themselves and their being, if you will. Because we can hope so much to have someone else to make us feel better. Or we can stop waiting for other people to make us understand who we really are and feel that damned good about ourselves. Why wait? In waiting for love, waiting for the one, waiting for a soulmate, you're wasting time. Let me add one last thing. If the one, the soulmate did exist, if they were real, then what would happen if you found this person, then this person rejected you, what would you say then? Is that really a soulmate? Would the soulmate not want you in turn? How do you then explain a soulmate that wants nothing to do with you? Then you have to ask, is that really a soulmate or someone you want and desire? Could it just be that simple? Could it just be that simple? But like a supernova, the explosion of a star, the spark of the mind, the realization, the understanding. In other words, focus, observe, remember. The world is yours. Have a nice day.